I'm going to take some old data from a simulation for population growth uh, from an old assignment that I made. Um, and let's say that at year 1000, the population was, here's the year, was 5 million. Year 1000, the population was 5 million. And that's the world population. So in year 1100, the world's population was estimated at 10,175,000. Okay, you can see it's roughly double, but it's not quite. What we want to find is what is the doubling time? And this is because uh, the reason is to find the P of T, population, which looks strangely like the radioactive decay problem, except this one is not a decay function. So this is a, uh, um, a population growth function. So we need the population at time zero, which is really at the beginning of our measurements, multiplied by two to the power of, well, if we're using the years here, if we're using the years as our thing, then I guess we're going to have to measure the current year minus 1,000, right? Divided by the doubling time. So T and T, sorry, T and TD are in years, all right? So T and TD are both in years. TD is the doubling time. So what is the doubling time? The time, this is the time it takes for the population to double. Now we don't mean almost double, we mean actually doubling. So if we're starting with 5 million, then doubling it will mean that 10 million will be our population at the end of the time period. So if we're following this, our P0, our P0, is the population at time zero, or at the beginning, really. So that's going to be 5 million. And that's going to be multiplied by 2 to a power, 2 raised to this T minus 1,000, which we don't know, over TD, right? That's the doubling time. Now, um, this kind of looks daunting because we have two unknowns, but we can make things a little bit better here. We can, for example, get rid of these humongous coefficients, and that means I can divide both sides by 5 million and put that here. Well, 10 million divided by 5 million is 2. Okay, it's 2. Great. And this is 2. So what's left on this side is this. 2 to the t minus 1,000 over the doubling time, td. Well, look, this is 2 to the 1. So it would appear as though t minus 1,000 over td, that this fraction is equal to 1. So we can say then that t minus 1,000 over td is equal to 1. Well, is that, what does that tell us? So, well, that tells us that t minus 1,000 equals td. It equals the doubling time. So we found a, a kind of a um, nice way of figuring out, of, of thinking about the doubling time. The only thing is, we need real data for this, because this 10 million is hypothetical. I mean, it's, it's not hypothetical exactly, because in order to get to as far as 10,175,000, we had to pass 10 million, but we just don't know when it passed. But to figure out TD, well, we can actually use an actual year, and we got one right here. So let's look at the year 1100. So in the year 1100, the population was 10,175,000, and this is equal to 5 million, as before, multiplied by, oh, sorry, going off the screen there, multiplied by t. Now, I have a number for t now, 
I have a thousand, uh, 1100. So this is my 1100 minus my 1000. So I'm subtracting this. So this is going to be uh, 1100 minus 1000 over TD. And look, it's the, you can feel the excitement building. There's only one unknown. And as before, like we did up here, we can divide both sides by 5 million. It's not T. Sorry about that. It's 2. 2 to the power of 100 over TD. Let's write that down again. 2.035. Okay. Now, this looks a little better. So we can find 2 to the 100 over TD, and we can find out where we land on 2.035 by guessing and checking. We turn on our calculator, and we get 2 to the power of, and we'll do a fraction, 100. So the 100 is fixed. We can't do anything about the 100. The only thing we can do about is a TD. So we'll just check this out. First of all, let's try the number 100. That's like 2 to the 1, so we know that's going to be 2. Now 2.035 is higher than 2. That means the exponent has to be bigger than 1. Now how do I make it bigger than 1? By manipulating the bottom. Well, I have to make it smaller. I can't make it bigger. So if I make it bigger, 2 to the 100 over 101, look what happens. I get a number less than 2. So I can't do that. So what I do, I go 2 to the, hold on, what, why didn't I just fix that before? So I got to go below 100. So 2 to the, let's say, 99. Let's see what that happens there. 2.014. Well, we're getting warm. That's not too bad. Let's see if we can do better. 2, 2 to the 98. Let's try that. 2.02. 2 to the 028. Okay, we're still we're still a little low. Let's try this again. 2 to the 97. And now we're too high. So now we know that the denominator of the exponent has to be between 97 and 98. We can, we can mess with this. So 97.5, 2 to the 035, and look, we're ever so close. Uh, we can make that 8 go below. If I can make that 8 that follows the 5 go below 5, I'll be happy, right? Because then I can round my number to 2.035, right? So then, okay, so then how about... 97 point, oh, I got to go higher, don't I? 6. So 2.03438. Oh, so we got to go between 5 and 6. How about 5, 5? 5? 2.0351. I think we're good. I'm, I'm going to stop here. There we go. So 97.55 is my double time, doubling time. It takes 97.55 years for the population to double on average. Okay. That's kind of what we're saying. All right, so that means that to rewrite this function here, we have to now rewrite it as p of t. p of t, if p is our population function with respect to time, with respect to the year, actually, the calendar year, we go with p naught times 2 to the power, actually we have a number for p naught, it's 5 million, but um, the important part is t minus 1000 divided by 97.55. So now, all we need to do now is plug in for t. This number we know, right? We know this number. So we can actually write it out so that we have our function fully expressed. As you can see here, we have 5 million times 2 to the power of t minus 1,000 over 97.55. This is an example of a population growth function with base 2, as opposed to what you would find, say, on a regression formula in Google Sheets, which uses this funky base e. It is true that you could make, you could have made this any base at all, Base 2 is just a nice one because population doubling is something that 
is often an interesting topic, the time it takes for a population to double, especially when we're talking about exponential growth. And with exponential growth, the doubling time is always the same throughout the exponential function. So it, it is something that does interest us. Uh, e, uh, the E uh, that's used in uh, Google Sheets doesn't quite convey this as well as, uh, as this would. So I did this by guessing and checking. You could do this through, um, you could also do this through uh, Desmos. In other words, enter the recommended function by Google Sheets and see if you can get the doubling time, the time it takes to go from 5 million to 10 million exactly. And you kind of have to guess and check on the graph as well. You, you kind of, you're sort of stuck one way or another, uh, sort of bluffing, bluffing around guessing and checking and figuring out uh, what the doubling time is. And it doesn't matter if it's a function of e, a function with e as the base or a function with 2 as the base. These, both of these functions map onto the same set of numbers. It should not make any difference. This function here should be more or less equal um, to uh, the function that is regressed on Google Sheets. The only weak part, part is this 97.55 which we had to guess and check and we know that that's a little fudgy it's a little bit off not too much though we got a we got you know a pretty good result here it's supposed to be 2.035 exactly but you know maybe we'll tolerate the extra one there because within a rounding error this is pretty good okay so and uh, that is how you go about uh, doing uh, doing the population assignment, especially when you're trying to make a function of base 2. So this is actually a pretty good challenge for you. And it involves doing things like, you know, getting rid of complicated business like these huge cumbersome numbers and make making it into something like this, right? Uh, or sorry, making it into something where there's just a 2 on both sides and then solving for one side, right? Um, and in this case, where we had 2.035 equals 2 to the 100 over TD, notice that left us with only one unknown. And by guessing and checking, we just figured out what the unknown was. And notice that TD, in order to increase the number beyond 2, TD had to be smaller than 100, not larger than 100. So that was, you know, that, that'll take a bit of getting used to. But again, it's just one of those things where you have to manipulate numbers and you learn and you know you learn and gain a number sense from that which is valuable in getting through your future education uh, where you in the future also have to work with uh, numbers in math